Okay, so good afternoon. Um, and I hope you have uh, had a very good day. So at the mentoring session today, you know, we'll start off by reviewing a little bit of what we've done in time past. Um, so last week, you know, maybe you will start off by giving me one or two things you took away and the action points you've started implementing. Okay. Um, thank you for the previous sessions and I'm looking forward to other sessions I'll be having with you, sir. So last week we talked about training and development. It was actually a very broad one. So I'll give some pointers I got from the session. I got that uh, training is for everyone in the organization and it's quite different from talent management, which is for specific people because of the specific talents that have been identified in them. A talent is a talent is someone whose contribution is critical to the success of an organization and it should be focused on because they are usually about 20% and they contribute up to about 80% of the bottom line of the organization. Then their talents are set out for succession and leadership purposes. Then I also got that promotion is when an employee is performing on the next level, sta um, next level standard. We talked about the differences between performance appraisal and performance management. Said performance appraisal is usually one off or maybe twice a year or quarterly, depending on how it is structured in the organization. But performance management is an ongoing and continuous process. It's it's done every day. It's done at any point, every point in time of in an organization. Then should I go on because they are quite go on, go on, go on. I want I want to <laughs> capture what you took away. Okay, then talk about um, the purpose of human resource development. It's to get a superior workforce for competitive advantage, to make better employees, and to promote employees' knowledge, skill, and ability. I got that because of the KSA acronym. Yes, then um, we also talked about the types of human resource development, the um, induction, onboarding and orientation stage, the midstream stage, the intellectual stage, and the um, 70, 20, and 10 development model. Broken down. Hello, are you here? Yes, I'm with you. I'm with you. Okay, so the 70% comprises of the self-development of the individual. The 20% is um, on the job. It's an on-the-job process. We just hold on. Okay, I said um, the benefits. I, I talked about it. Should I start from the beginning again, sir? Hello. Go ahead. Go ahead from where you stopped. Oh, okay. So I said um, types of human resource development, um, on the job training, but learning on the job, then job shadowing. You know, you were <clears throat> you were focusing on the 70, 20, 10 model. Development model. Okay. Okay. Go on, go on. okay. So I said seventy percent is the um uh self the, the, the person's self-development, the person yeah. taking ownership of um, what he will be doing, then 20% on the job, coaching and shadowing, then 10% involves training, yes. structural training from the organization, you know, certified courses and all of that from the organization. Yes. Yes, then that's for that, those are some of my takeouts from the last session. Should I also talk about previous ones? Awesome. Okay. So what actions, you know, what have been your action plan and what have you activated since then? Okay, um, there was something you pointed out the last time that it would be nice for all of 
the staff to have you to have like the company logo on their LinkedIn page. Perfect. Perfect. So yeah, so it's something we are like, like I'm proposing to the team to do. So yeah, so we'll be doing that very soon. Then you gave me an assignment to draft performance man management policies, which I'm doing. I have a deadline by the end of the month. So yes. I'm working on that now. Awesome. That's a good one. That's a good one. All right. Let's let's you know look at um these uh performance appraisal form, you know, again and look at areas where we should touch. We've talked okay. areas of staff engagement and welfare. We've talked areas of training. You know, I've talked area of onboarding. I've talked area of uh, performance management. Okay. Um, yes, sir. Which other area? So uh, we will look at these admin costs. That's just general administration. We'll look at that. Yes. Okay, record keeping and filing. Well, we'll look at you know how you can make it better. That's part of admin you know, that we'll touch later. Also, this is also an admin area. Preventing maintenance and facilities management. That's also areas of our thing that I will touch. Okay. Um, let me start off by saying this. Let me focus a little bit on the admin areas now, you know, uh, you know by, by speaking to them. Okay. Um, for instance, uh, when I look at admin costs, you are told to manage and to reduce admin costs. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yes, sir. Uh, don't forget that. As part of, you know, uh, any organization, there are two ways in which we make profit. Way one is by bringing in money, which we call revenue. So by increasing the revenue. All right? Yeah. So that leads to profit. Way two, or the second dimension by which we make profit, is even if you cannot bring in money, you must reduce cost. The first way is if cost cannot be reduced, at least in, increase the revenue that's coming in. The second way is if you cannot do something about revenue because that is not your primary constituency, you must reduce cost. So that by doing either of this, the bottom line will be improved. Essentially, human resource departments and admin departments, they bring in profit to the organization and improve the bottom line by doing the second scenario, the second strategy, which is what? Reduce costs. Increasing the oh, okay. Which is reduce costs. Because essentially, you are not a department that, that does sales. You are not the department that, that that does uh, uh, that is saddled with marketing in terms of marketing the company's product, and so you increasing the revenue directly, even though you can do it indirectly by increasing the capacity of the people. All right, and so because their capacity is improved, so indirectly you are improving the way they are bringing in revenue. But what you can be seen to be doing directly that can be seen is, for instance, how you improve your uh the various admin ads of your budget how you reduce the cost on them some of the major if i tell you what would be the major admin cost that you incur in your organization what, what will you what will they be mention them trans transport I'm, I'm coming i want to write it i want to write that so that we can we can both uh, speak to this okay so major Major, sorry, <laughs> admin <laughs> costs. Right. So you said one is what? Transportation. Transportation. Rent. Okay. Rent is actually number one. Okay. 
Okay, so rent is a big one. <laughs> yes. Okay. Transport. It's not so major, but it's maybe you can explain to me, you know, transport in terms of what you are you transporting staff, transporting um what? What exactly? Mm. I'm going to talk about the last quarter. Last quarter we spent a lot on transportation because of um, we had some activations on the island for a client. So we currently use boats okay. for business. Yes. Yeah, so at the end of the month, they give us a uh, a total amount of what we spent on transport. So we, we even have we even owed last quarter. We owed a yes, we owed some money last quarter because you know staff we're always going and transporting ourselves back home after the activations. Yes, but this quarter we've not spent so much on transportation anymore. But I will still put it as a major cost in cases where where we have to go to the malls to fix some damaged screens or damaged items in the malls. Uh, you know, we, we spend a lot on transportation too. That's then, right. yes, sir. So then rent, then what else? Lights. Light. So let's, should we call them utilities, huh? Utilities, yes, sir. Okay. So under utilities, you have what? Light, okay. generator, So uh, the lights there, let us call it, uh, is it, uh, um, is it, is it uh, PHCN or EDC? Yeah, PHCN. Okay. PHCN. Then, so what uh, would I call um, insurance? Okay, we, we must separate that. Okay. We must, yes, it's not, don't let us put it on the Okay. So. We will speak about that. Uh, PHCN, then you said generator. Yeah, diesel. Yes, on that generator, we have all our diesel maintenance you know, and all that. Okay, do we pay for water? Do we pay for what? Yes. Okay. Yes, water. Okay. Okay. So, then office supplies. Okay, good. Good. So I, I put that under maintenance. Okay. Okay. Okay, your maintenance, office supplies. They are also utilities, but let's separate them to that. Term. Okay, so all your supplies, okay, are here. Okay. Yes, sir. Then you said something about insurance, isn't it? Yes, insurance, yes. Yeah. Okay, the category of insurance, you know, though they are broad, okay. There is the, what, what categories do we do presently? Um, for, for digital screens. Good, all right. So, so one has to do with business related insurance. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes, sir. For our screens. What other insurance do we do? Majorly that. We don't do group life insurance. No. We, we don't do insurance for our staff, no group life. No. We paid last, we paid once. We did it just once because we wanted to get a business contract from the government. So we had, it was part of our requirements for that. But we did that just once. We didn't renew it this year. Okay. Okay. So I will start that. All right, so let's just focus on even this, and there may be other associated costs. Mm -hmm. But sincerely, if you cannot have a clarity about the area you know, of your cost, you may not know 
the areas where you must, you, you know, you can, uh, you know, devise strategies of how to reduce costs. Don't forget, we've said HR and admin, essentially, even the areas you can affect the bottom line is through cost reduction, essentially, because you are not in the consulting business. If you're in the consulting business, where indeed HR is your main business, then you can bring in money through offering HR services. But here, in most cases, you are more of a supporting structure that helps the main business, even of, of media. All right, so how will you help affect the bottom line positively and in a recognizable way? It will be through you affecting cost saving. Yes. All right. So if you don't now, if you're not able to identify the cost aids very well, it may be difficult to understand where you need to screw the button. You need to look for other ways, you know, uh, you know, of, of the way. So this, let's look at this. Transport. There are several options in transport. You've gone, you know, via the uh, aspect of using a third party provider, which is both. I want to believe that it's because you have weighed even the uh, the cost benefit of using a third party provider to even having an in-house transport pool. Yes, sir. All right, so it's cheaper, but how can we still work with these third party providers to even have better rates? Are there other better providers than both? Well, no, they... There should be, but for now, they are the only ones we um, know about. All right. Okay. So, and that's where you as an admin, you see, you as a person managing the admin aspect of HR, you must always, don't forget, I, I told you even in recruitment, you market as you go. Yes. Also, in terms of reducing the cost, okay, is a continuous reinvention of your function to have eye for areas where you can reduce cost and still have obtain level quality of services. So who says, you know, you should not have ventured to invite other service providers to say, look, this is what we do even, and often we, we use vehicles even for some of our services. Can you pitch in and let us also know what you have to offer? I know Uber also you know, offers in Nigeria. Yes, they do. Okay, all that providers that you know, Tell them to pitch in. Don't forget what we did with the insurance, the HMO. Yes. The health insurance. All right? So the same thing you would do here. We invited other service providers to pitch in. So we will be able to compare costs. Because for you, you uh, and because the, you know this person has the best cost and the best quality now, doesn't mean that we will continue to use him forever. Maybe annually, you will have to be doing this quality pitching to evaluate whether there are better service providers that have come into the market. Do you understand that? Yes, sir. So you will have to do that. There are several other strategies you have to maximize even the, your, your present service provider. I don't know how you use it, you know, uh, use them, but you know, uh, do you do your route planning very well? So that car pulling, okay. You know, uh, yes, we, we, we did that last um, quarter when I, you know, I told you we incurred a lot last yes. quarter. So we did that last quarter okay, to cool. help. Cool. So carpooling, route planning will help you, you know, manage the cost there. All right. Because they are business related costs, as you made mention of it. Okay. You cannot, uh, you know, avoid them. What you want to do is as much as possible efficiency is your strategy when it comes to this because they are cost you cannot do it efficiency how we get the best at the least price that is efficiency how you use your resources to give you the optimum returns all right so you know uh don't forget the things i've said there look for alternative service providers let them pitch okay all right you know, uh, and over time you'll find out that like, you will be able to get the most efficient. And how do you know the amount of cost you've reduced here? The first one you are using now we, you know, becomes the benchmark cost. For instance, you said you are using 
you know, these service providers called boats presently for your transport, they become the benchmark mark cost for you. So any benchmark cost and benchmark quality of, of service delivery. So any other person that wants to pitch, you, know, you use this benchmark to evaluate their offerings. Likewise today, it is so easy to have third party reviews beyond even what the, the company that is come to pitch presents to you. Third party reviews can easily be gotten online. Go online and check out even what third party users have said concerning the service providers that want to service you. And compare this, all these things and do a good report and present it to your management that you know, maybe this is the best, best way to go. This is the cost saving we'll be making at this same level of service quality, if we use this, give them something that they can, you know, you know, that can use even for management decisions. And then you'll be seen to be making strategic impact. The amount of whatever you say, at the end of the day, you can, you can boldly say that this is how much I have brought into the company. Because I've told you, what you've brought into the company is not only based on the sales or the revenue, it's also based on how much you've helped us to save. So it's either you, you, you are doing sales or you are doing saving. Write that down. Okay. It, it's either you are doing sales to bring in revenue or you are doing savings to reduce cost. So the strategy for profit is either sales or savings. Okay. Either you are doing sales to increase revenue. Yes. Or savings. So reduce cost. Yes. So this is very important. So the strategy for profiting in an organization is either sales or savings. It's critical. It, and you can apply this also to your personal life also. Your life is not improving. You are not increasing and growing. Even you are not even paying particular attention to these two aspects of life. You are doing sales by increasing your own competence and becoming a better person a better value giver. That's how you do sales personally. And you are doing savings by prioritizing what you are doing so that you are not stretching yourself thin. You are, you are focusing yourself so that even the little you are doing in the areas you're doing, you know, it, it's bringing in a lot of maximum return. So you are saving your energy, saving your resources, even to focus on the aspect of your sales, which is your, you know, the aspect of your self-development. That's how you can apply it personally. So it's both a personal coach, coaching, you know, uh, or mentoring you know, strategy and also a business strategy. Now let's look at the rent. The rent is almost taken as a sunk cost, but you must begin to think ingeniously how for every square foot of your rent, of your office, we can squeeze value. How can I squeeze value? Is it by negotiating on the long run that we will we'll be able to have good discounting if we negotiate for a longer lease? Is it by multiple use of the space we have? So that- Just, we'll, just like what we do downstairs. Perfect. perfect, I love that. Just like what we do downstairs. Okay, so you must you know, think about, okay, we have reached this level in terms of you know, uh, achieving cost saving vis-a-vis -vis rent. What else can we do? Some people do co-sharing, some allied services, but are, that, that are not competitive. They can tell them, look, please, you can use part of our office space, you can use part of those places downstairs that is not usually used and we'll still be collecting money. You know, so if you must begin to think ingeniously how to maximize the rent. It sits on your table. What other discussions can I have with these uh, uh, estate managers and the owners you know, of, of this place to give us concessions that can you know, translate into cost savings? And closely linked to your rent is your utilities. 
things that can help you to manage your utilities, you know, also resides in the in the area of your policies. Simple policies like you don't charge your phone indefinitely when you are in office. Once it's hundred percent, why why continually charge it? Simple policies like switch off the light of your office immediately you step out will affect your electricity consumption. Or should we have a device, okay, that automatically switches off the light immediately you close the door, you know, and, and, you know, or just like you have in those hotels when you have cards, okay, that it's only you insert the card when you come in that the, uh, you, the, the light will come up. Once you remove the card and you're going out, it goes off. But if we don't have automated systems like that, it, it should be within the policy that look, light must not be on when you are outside the office. It's as simple as that. So what are some things that unnecessarily consume even, uh, electricity in the office? How can we work around them so that we will only consume the minimal and most efficient level of electricity to produce the the effect even that we require. Are we using the right kind of you know, energy saving bulbs? So you must really think around all this. Do we unnecessarily put on the air condition on, uh, or air condition in, in offices and rooms even in, when we are going on maybe field assignments, we just put them on. So you must begin to think about this. So one thing we do is yes. the generator. Okay. If there is no light, we leave the gen. We use the gen up until twelve o'clock. Right. Because we have an inverter. So once it is twelve, I tell them to just put off the gen, and then we use the inverter for the remaining part of the day. Because we have standing fans that can help. Okay. Yes. Very it's good. Up. Very good. That is one good thing. But don't forget when I taught you about metrics. Earlier on, you know, data is very important. You need to be able to crush the data to understand that by the strategy you are doing now, what is the cost to you? And it is based on that present cost that you'll be devising, okay, what can I cut? What can I do to cut what? With what you are doing now, using multiple uh, source of electricity, you know, combining generator with with uh, solar in, uh, with inverter, okay, and and maybe the way we are doing the electricity from the PCN now, okay, we've known all the costs. We know for how long, in average, PCN gives us light. We know for how long, in average, we put on the generator. For how long we put on the inverter. What is the cost in average to us presently? Then we go on. Then we go on to look at, okay, maybe for next month, if I tweak the policy to affect PSCN, as I've said, so that people don't just put on their light when there is NEPA, even where there is PHCN, where there is, you know, maybe your distribution company, you know, giving you supply. They don't just put on light when they are not around. You know, switching off even when, when they are outside. You know, what has been the impact of this in the quarter? What has been the impact of, for instance, the generator, you put it on until 12, you put on the inverter until later. Can, can our inverter even last us longer and we reduce diesel? Okay, if diesel is the, is the most expendable cost in generator, how can we reduce cost on diesel. Even if we want to be putting on the light until 12, using diesel when there is no government you know, uh, 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 elect electricity supply. Do I begin to look at my suppliers? Are there better supplies of diesel? Just like I've said concerning the transport, can I begin to pitch to other suppliers to ask them if we can get better leads? So all of these things you have to begin to 
It has to be on a continuous basis because this person has been supplying us, you know, for the five past year. Does not mean you don't look out. Don't forget it is marketing as you go, not going to market. That is the principle that runs through the entire thing you do as HR admin. You are looking at continuous improvement in all that you do as an HR admin officer. So how can I get better this? Do you have colleagues in the industry that you can ask, you can leverage on what cost are they getting theirs? Who are the suppliers? Can I talk to them? The same thing happens with your water utility. Do you have leaking faucets that waste away water? It's better to prevent than to waste. Do you buy water? If you buy water, are there you know, you know, different suppliers that can give you better prices and this, the same you know, quantity, quality? How much do you pay for your NEPA bill rates to the government per, you know, per month or per year? How can we improve on that bill? By not wasting water. What are the areas where you have noticed that we waste water? Simple thing like even your toilet system, there is the major flush, there is a minor flush. Have you educated your, um, your co-staff, co-employees, that when you don't sit, you don't do the sitting you know, uh, position in toilet in terms of maybe defecating, you use only the minor flush. It is only when you do the major that you do the, the major, major flush. And you know, this will save one water to an extent. Particularly if you are within uh, maybe a building where you have a water meter that measures the amount of water that you consume. So, I mean, you begin to think out of the box. You don't have, you won't, be, you won't think without the box. That's the highest level of thinking. What can I do better? What you are doing may be good, but I tell you the enemy of the great is the good. There is a great place you must go to. But if you are contented with the good, you will never get there. The enemy of the great is the good. So whatever you are doing that you think is good enough, or rather, we, whatever you are doing that you think is good is not good enough because there's always space for improvement. There's a place called Dare, which is the, the great place where you must long for every time. Even when you, you have gotten to the place called Dare, you still see a better horizon ahead of you. So what can you do to maximize utilities and to increase efficiency? Is that clear to you? Yes, sir. All right. Now, maintenance supplies, you know, your toilet rolls, your tissues, what, what, list some of the, you know, your dispensers, uh, list some of the maintenance supplies you do. Um, toilet, roll, toilet rolls, um, okay. soap, usual air fresheners, okay. um, hand wash, hand sanitizers. Okay. Yes. All right. Good. Toilet cleaners, diffusers, and all of that. So. All right. Okay, so you must look at all of this vis-a-vis -vis even the supplier codes, how you can get it better, you know, buying in bulk versus buying in pieces. Yeah, buying okay. in bulk. Uh -huh. yeah. All right. So just look around that also. Uh, can we save any cost? Even is there wastages? Where are the wastages? How can I address the wastages? Is it through counseling? Is it through addressing individuals that I think, look, they, look I have noticed wastages through them? You know, do I do direct buying 
instead of third party buying in terms of supplies? We begin to look at this because at the end of the day, this is what you will be assessed by. When you sit with your supervisor and you are discussing, I have saved cost and maintenance. He will tell you how, uh, he will ask you how, then you will show him. This is the benchmark or you show up depending on you know, whether you have a supervisor who is a she or he. This is the benchmark of my supplies in January. I introduced this strategy in February. And in that, in that quarter, January, February, March, this was the result. We reduced 5%. So you are able to speak with numbers. Don't forget, CEOs run their business based on numbers, based on metrics, not based on gut feeling, not based on, and I did well, though, how did you do well? It must be crunched into numbers. And that's why I said, all you are doing, crush them as baseline today. When you can, you can stipulate all you are doing as baseline, sincerely to be easier for you, even in the future. Do you get that? Yes, sir. All right, let's go to insurance. Insurance, you said, uh, we never miss the business aspect of insurance, which is insuring all your, uh, the, the gadgets used for business, because that's essentially what you sell. Your LEDs and all that, isn't it? Yes, sir. All right. Do you know the real intention of ins insurance? Discuss with me. What is the real intention of insurance? Sir, are you there? I am here. I am here. Okay, sir. Yeah, I said that's a compulsory one. Okay. So I, I want a feedback from you regarding what, what is or what are the real intentions of insurance when you take insurance on things or on people. What, what's the real intention? Um, to make it easy when unforeseen circumstances happen. Thank you. Thank you. To make it easy. Make it easy to do what? To, you know, to get back on it. I, I'm using the instance of Novari Mall. Yes. Last year, yes. The, during the um, protest they did yes. where our screens were damaged and all of that. So it was, you know, it, the weight was not so much even though it was much, but it wasn't as heavy as it would have been if we had not insured okay. the Perfect. screen. Perfect. I love that. So in the discipline under each other admin, we call that particular aspect risk management. You are managing your risk. Risk management, you know, involves you preventing or minimizing the impact on organization so you ensure by the way you, you know uh you know when you take an insurance on on equipment on business or on people what you are doing is you want to minimize unforeseen danger damages and risk so that your business will not be totally impaired and you can quickly get back to that state before the risk or the danger happen. Insurance is to, is to minimize your risk. So when the, the risk occurs, you are, you are at least brought back to the states pre the risk, pre the incidents. It is not, you know, uh, uh, Therefore, unimaginable that the example you gave, there was a riot, they broke screens and all that, you know, and you have, you, you, you have covered, because you must also understand that there are several levels of coverage in insurance. There are, there are, there are some extra uh, premium you pay for, for maybe force majeure, if you have paid those premiums, you can even cover those items under, under those you know, premiums. 
because I don't know what the terms of insurance on some of your LEDs cover. Is it just electricity damage? Is it just, you know, theft? Is it just, you know, so you must look at what the, our present insurance premium covers. We have seen that there might be, you know, uh, uh, malicious intents, just like, you know, we have seen now. If it doesn't cover that, you know, riots, you know, you know or storms, those are first, my, you know, things that, are, you know, are time act of God. If it does not cover that, you know, they may not be able to pay you even to, to bring you back to the state you were before. And so insurance in particular, you will see that is central to performance management. Don't forget performance management is all about organization performing at an optimal level to secure today and also give hope for tomorrow in terms of sustainability. So everything we do that ensures that business continuity is in place, is all around performance management. So insurance is a business continuity strategy. If you understand this, therefore, you would not delay in paying your premiums because you understand that the unforeseen is unpredictable. And there is a saying in the insurance you know, industry, no premium, no cover so that you'll not be caught napping. Some of the first things you remove to secure continuity and guarantee sustainability of your business is insurance. But you may work it out how to maximize the cost of insurance also, because in most cases you pay in advance. <coughs> Sorry. Sorry. Sir. Thank you. But you, you may, you may, Discuss with your brokers or insurance company. Is it possible you pay twice in a year and still have the guarantee of full cover? Or, you know, compulsorily, they, they will always want you to pay all at once. So you, 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 can, you, can, you can look at that. There was a time I told my broker, I want better rates. Put out a pitch to, to various insurance companies. And at the end of that pitch, I got the same cover, even with some extensions to the cover at a better rate. When the insurance companies, even that I was using then, saw that, yes, they are out for pitch, they buckled up and they gave me better rates. In some instances, I divided the cover so that there will be competition, so I can compare like for likes. So these are some of the ways in which you go around insurance. But don't forget, read the fine blueprints of what is covered very well so that you are getting maximum value for every money you spend in, in your insurance. So what are some of the things you know, uh, that you've learned on insurance now? Give me feedback. That we should we, could, we can actually pay in advance. Okay. We should not wait for something to happen before we are before we start running up and down yeah. with that. Then I also learned that insurance is a business continuity strategy. It helps to you know put you in the position you were before the unforeseen circumstance happened. Thank you. Yes. Perfect. 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 So it's a very, very strong strategy in risk management. Do we have insurance even for the office? No, we don't have for the office. God forbid fire incidents. God forbid theft. We don't think there are valuables that can, that can pose problem for our business continuity. So you must be I, asking that. You know, yes. sometimes, sometimes because where you are using is not your own. The insurance, you know, and that's where I want you to find out, you know, is linked to the rent. You know, there are what we call householders, house owners insurance. The owners of that building, what are they liable to, to insure? 
there will be a degree to that. Because that's part of what even benefits you are taking even for paying a premium for rent. There might be others that say, okay, no, I remove that premium, take, take responsibility of it, and you know, I'll, that will help reduce your rent. These are some of the negotiations you can have with your landlord. You get that? Yes, sir. Now, for employees, that's the second aspect. I've, 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 we've discussed insurance for business, insurance for employees. Insurance for employees also is linked to insurance for business. Because don't forget, I said insurance is all about risk management and business continuity. And where you have what we call key man insurance, critical staff like your CEO, if the business continuity relies on his well being, demands that if anything happens to him today, business will collapse. You need to do a key man insurance. Are there other staff members like that who are so critical to your business? They are key talents. And insurance around them will not be bad. Have you seen footballers insure their legs? It is for this same reason. So it depends on what kind of insurance. At one particular time, I insured my CEO with what I call you know, uh, evacuation was included in their medical insurance that I did. So that you know, they can be evacuated. For instance, if there are surgical operations that need to be done outside the country, I add those, ins you know, uh, the HMO that, and, <clears throat> sorry, my insurance for them at that time, included that for the, my CEOs across my, the group where I you know, was the group HR director. For the other staff members, medical insurance include what you are doing presently, which is the HMO. And we have discussed this earlier on under wealthier services. I said you must yeah. call for a pitch yes. to get the better or the best in HMO services into the company. So you do that, all right? Yes, sir. So that's one aspect of insurance for, for staff, the medical, and what I call the key man insurance. There is another kind of insurance, which is the group life, which you said, you 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 only did once, and because it was a requirement for a particular you know a, a contract, and you, know, you are not doing anymore. It is also part of welfare for staff, and because you are not doing it particular, you know the way to best do group man, group life insurance is that if, for instance, you have ten staff, okay, you just pull the entire ten staff, you know that this is what we have. And, and, and dialogue with you know, your insurance broker or the insurance companies that they give you rates. So that if there is uh, exit and entry, it still cover, covers the new staff because you have told them it is this number of staff that is covered. All right. Uh, but then you will know that you have to quickly update the record with your insurance company should in case when a new staff comes in and an old staff goes, all right? So the group life insurance also, I will say, is not optional under the new labor law. So that you will not also be running contrary to operations of the labor law. The group life insurance is compulsory. Just like your pension is compulsory. Okay. You understand that? Yeah, we so I should of, push for this. Uh... Yes, push for it. Push for it. Okay, because part of it, you know, is is should there be any mishap? The beautiful thing with group life insurance is that it will cover your staff, whether they are at home, mm. whether are, you know whether they are in bed, or whether they are at work. The one that covers them strictly only at work. Is what we call workman compensation insurance. Work what? Work workman compensation. Oh, workman compensation. Yes, but when you do group life, it covers them in entirety. 
when you do group live, it covers them, whether they are coming to work, whether they are leaving office. And, but, but the only thing that group life you know, uh, deals with is it, it deals with only life issues. You understand that? Yes, sir. Only matters that have to do with life in, te in terms of death. It doesn't cover even maybe someone fell and became amputated. It doesn't cover, cover even, even a, a loss of income due to incapacitation while at work. That is what the workman compensation covers. The workman compensation covers only job-related in, in, in injuries that makes that staff or that worker to suffer loss of income or, or income generating capacity. And when you do all this, the staff are so you know, uh, uh, enamored and com co comfortable with the fact that they are covered. Our, our backs are covered. We can give our all when we climb those rafters to place those huge boards, okay? You know, because they know we are covered. But for now, the expenses of any such mishap, if you don't cover it by insurance, will be upon the company. And I don't know if we have had incidences in time past. No, we haven't. We haven't. Thank, okay, thank God we, have, we haven't. But part of what insurance does is it mitigates against the, the, the uh, repercussion or the, the impact of the incidents if it happens. So part of what you will do, your present uh, insurance firm or broker, talk to them. Let them give you a cost. So you even compare this. What we do in insurance is we compare the cost if it happens vis-a-vis -vis the premium we are paying today. There are several costs that insurance protects is beyond financial. There is also reputational costs. If, for instance, you didn't insure that, that uh, uh, LED when, you know, uh, during the, stri uh, the, the, the riot and it was broken down and all that, you will have lost money, which is financial. But if you cannot quickly bounce back and uh, the client says, look, we will go to another company to provide us with that. You have a reputation of someone who, you know, has not put in place good risk management. And so it can Im impair referral businesses. It can impair even ongoing business, even with the present company you are dealing with. So there is reputational or image issues attached to insurance. But the major thing is that it puts your business back on track at the earliest time possible and with the most minimal cost. Because in most cases, what we pay for premium is nothing compared to, yes. to you know, uh, what you will have paid if you're coughing out the costs yourself. All right, so we've done basically major admin issues today admin cost we've done you know that and we are focused on that today and don't forget when i started earlier around this mentoring with you i told you admin aspect of hr deals with the non human non life aspect even though this non life aspect affect the life aspects the human aspect while the human resource aspect of your job deals with the life aspect the, the humans as resources. It deals with their psychology. It deals with their social aspect. It deals with their health aspect. Bringing their mind to business to be able to offer the most effective and efficient performance. So you as an HR admin, you are combining both. Knowing that the non-life aspect affects the life aspect. So whatever you are doing, your focus is on don't forget that central core of every business, performance management. That's the central core. So as you drive performance management, the bottom line will be affected. And may I close this session by saying there are three types of bottom line that every business must pursue. 
including your business. The first is the financial. That is the most traditional and most popular bottom line that people you know, uh, pursue. Indeed, when you talk about bottom line, people think it's only financial, but no, there is a triple P today. The triple P bottom line. The first is profit, which is financial. The second is the people, and that is where you sit as an HR person. The people is called the social bottom line. This is the reputational bottom line. This is the bottom line that has to do with your employee welfare, the engagement issues. It affects even the first bottom line, which is the profit, if you don't take care of it very well. What impacts the company is having on the life and on the, you know, on, on the engagement and on the welfare of, of, of these people. So people, which is the social, is the second bottom line. So I said the first P is profit, which is financial. The second P is what? People. People, very good, which is the social. The third is the planet. The planet, which is environmental. We must therefore in planet because of the kind of business, think of how we can bring about much more innovative designs that number one, beautifies the environment of our society and that has less impact on, on greenery, on, on emis emission of light. If, for instance, the LEDs you are using are emitting about 1,000 wattage, can we partner with organizations that can give us the same quality but at a lesser, L at lesser wattage? Because don't forget, your emission of light contributes to, to global warming. So global warming is one particular aspect in planet bottom line environment. The way we use our waste water is also. Water is a scarce resources. So how you manage that internally, you are, you, are, you, are, you are contributing to the bottom line. And don't forget, I've told you how also managing those utility affects even your cost saving. So it is affecting eventually the first P, which is the profit. So you see how the three weave together. Yes. The kind of generator we are using, what kind of emission? Have you called engineers to help us measure, measure the emission level of, of your generator? Maybe it is due for ringing. That's why the emission level is very high. If the emission level is very high, it will consume more diesel, consume more oil. And this, in, you know, in a way, we affect even the social discomfort to, your, to, to, to the environment social reputation, it will affect the cost because you are using more oil, you are using more diesel. So it is affecting first P, it's affecting the second P which is social and the people. And it is affecting the environment by emitting monocarbon dioxide into the environment. And so causing greenhouse effect. So you see everything that you know, works together. So operating efficiently in the optimal way helps you to guarantee that the three bottom line are secured. And so business continuity is secured and sustainability for the, well, not only your business, but also for the entire environment in which you're doing your business. Has it been helpful today? Really helpful, sir. Awesome. Give me a feedback, feedback of the high points of what you have taken. Now, should I do that now? Yes, now. Now. Okay. Um, sir? Yes, do it now, even though you will still write me a report, but do it now. <laughs> I want to hear. Yeah. Okay, so um, we looked at the major admin costs we have at Nimbus. And then, um, first, for the transport aspects, I put down that I have to tell other transport providers to pitch in. We need to have alternative service providers to have you know, to know what they can offer to compare um, costs and all of that. Yeah. Then um, we checked the utility, maintenance, and insurance. Then insurance is where I had a major takeout. Very good. He said we have for for insurance for employees, the key man insurance. You know, yes. To know 
for those major people. I won't say major people, but for those key, key, talents. key call resources. Them, call them talents. For key those talents. key talents you have in the company, right. you know, to have to to have something just in case something happens to them because it's inevitable. Something can happen at any time. Very good. Yes, then um, medical insurance, which is the HMO we currently do. Then another major takeout is the group life insurance, said it very compulsory. So I'll push for this with the MD oh, when it comes around. Very good. Then very good. Workmen, yeah, okay. Workman conversation. Okay, yeah, so I'll do a report on the other things. Okay. I, very good, very good. And in closing, let me say this there is a, apart from your uh, CEO seeing you as only drawing costs, additional costs, when you bring this proposal, uh, we need to you know, do group life and all that. The way you will, you will paint it will be to paint it from competitive advantage perspective. What you might lose in case you don't do this. The other, other strategy you can put in place will be an insurance from HR perspective. How do I mean? If you market as you go for each of those key talent roles, because you know that being humans, anything can happen, apart from you insuring them via the insurance company, there is an HR insurance you can do. And how do I mean? So there won't be a lag time if they are uh, indisposed. And that's why I said market as you go. For each role, you must have possibility of three to four replacements in the waiting that you can call on, finish the interview, and bring them on. So that the, the law time will be very, very minimal. That is the HR strategic insurance that you can put in place, apart from paying insurance company to insure them. I hope you get that. Yes, sir. So part of an effective recruitment system is also a strategic insurance uh, uh, a mechanism for your employees, particularly for your key, key talents. Okay. Yes, sir. So I hope you've gotten value today. I did. I did, sir. Awesome. I did. So, Thank you uh, so much. But so, will I be getting?